Good afternoon and welcome to Jackson Christian School, home of the Lady Eagles. We've got softball today here on Worthy Road Studios Game of the Week. Sometimes we'll have more than one in a week. And uh, we are here from the softball field. Um, kind of trying to describe the situation to press box and we will uh, we'll be a little slow. You'll see it before I will the the calls at, at first base. Uh, the dugout and press box don't cooperate with each other on the first base side. And uh, on the mound for Jackson Christian, we uh, we are starting a, a little little late. Is but the game is uh, first batter is in. That's Sidney Scott who wears number three for South Gibson. And the first pitch, the umpire says it was a ball. On the mound is Maggie Richson, who had such a great season. Last year, I believe the Lady Eagles were 22, 10, and 1, made the state tournament. Second pitch, and just a little low and inside, so should be a two ball, no strike count. Richson winds and fires. This one is fouled off down the first baseline, out of play. And, of course, we'll remind you of a few things in softball. You do not have a mound in softball. It is called the circle. And there are some other terms that we will get to. The 2-1 pitch. And he says it was a strike. So that should even the count up at 2-2. Two and two. And I think I'm going to have to depend. I start to say DAC stats. Actually, we use Game Changer. It's fouled off, holding tight at 2-2 is number three, the left fielder, Sidney Scott. The catcher today is McKinley Arnold, and we only had one player change from last year's team. Our second baseman from last year graduated. Richardson's looking down. Her pitches are there on the arm. What's being called from the dugout? And a swinging strike three. So one out in the inning. Outfield playing straight away. And, of course, like I told you, uh, Maggie Richardson did such a great job last year. Um, she's got a – in 2021, actually, she won uh, – she was 22-8, and eight, I believe. There's a strike right down Main Street. Second pitch on the way. A swinging strike two, and it's got a little juice on it. That was the number one down Main Street. One out in the inning. Of course, in softball, you have to play up some in front of the bag at third base. Normal depth at short and second. That one bounces. Holt is on first, and she has come up even with the bag. Out in the outfield, Brooks is in the left field, who – Trinity Brooks plays basketball. We'll tell you more about that. Awfully close, and that should even the count at 2-2. Two, two. And my scorebook page wants to, to uh, blow a little bit here. Brisk win. There's a slow roller. Third baseman was up. Shoots over to first to hold, and it should be the second out of the inning. So two away. Score that one. Five to three, that's third base to first, two outs. Brings up Gracie Mullins, the second baseman for South Gibson. Both teams dapperly attired today. South Gibson in the blue uniforms, tops and bottom, with the pinstripes. We're in the white tops with our blue pants. And again, no change in the positioning of the outfield. Second pitch on the way, a little lofted fly ball, and it comes to the shortstop, and it, was, it wasn't it was a whole lot of air to it for the third out in the inning. So Mullins goes down, ending that inning. Three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We'll be back after this important timeout. 
Southern Family Dentistry's dental laser technology is a game changer for those who experience dental anxiety. Just imagine, no more drills. Look at some of Dr. Nathan Nash's patient results. We provide a relaxing environment to ensure a pleasant visit every time. From a simple cleaning to a full dental reconstruction. And now, prepless veneers. We're there when you need us. Dr. Nathan Nash will treat your family just like he wants his family treated. Check them out on Facebook to see all those loving smiles. Call 300-4545. Southern Family Dentistry, we want to make you smile. And we are back for the bottom of the first inning as the pitcher warms up for South Gibson. We're still trying to create room here in the press box a little bit, but pitching for South Gibson today will be Emmy Whittemore. And uh, she wears jersey zero. Now, South Gibson does have a win over our Lady Eagles this year, 13-3 in a contest. And I hope I cannot read Coach's, Coach's lips of what change she's trying to make. So this is number 15 coming to the plate, and that should be Trinity Brooks. Yeah, playing left field, Trinity Brooks, the basketball player. Good speed, can slap hit a little bit. Left-handers usually are. She gets close to the line. If you'll check the positioning of our great camera shots by Worthy Road Studios. But more wind up and pitch, eh? and she was taking off like left-handers do. And uh, swinging strike. No ball, one strike count. She'll be followed in the order by number 17. Audrey Dean will be the next batter after Trinity Brooks. Brooks trying to slap one to left field as a swinging strike for strike two. And the third baseman is up about two steps in front of the bag and off the line about four feet. Left fielder playing in just a little bit for a slap hitter. The center fielder shading towards left center. And Brooks strides up there but doesn't swing that time. The pitch was low, one ball, two strikes to count. No outs. Love to get the leadoff lady on because she is the speedster. You saw her in basketball take it coast to coast. Here's one on the ground. Heads towards first base, gets through, and she's going to head for second, maybe third. The relay a little slow. They had trouble getting to it. And with a stand-up triple and having to dive back into the bag is Trinity Brooks. That's the way to lead it off. We'll make sure that they do score that as a triple. Because I am not the official scorer. But now runner in scoring position at third base and 17. Audrey Dean enters the box. She'll be followed by number 20, McKinley Arnold. Now Audrey Dean gets up in front of the box. Kind of has the old Joe DiMaggio stance, and she fouls this one off down the right field line. A little wider stance. And, of course, the mechanics and things are different. I see Coach Phillips over there at third base. Appreciate him getting us some roster and stats together today. And we'll be telling you about some of these. And this one is they say it's a fair ball. Wow. And... Uh, Let's see if there's any type of appeal or anything. One out in the inning for the Lady Eagles. As Dean goes down, brings up McKinley Arnold, who wears 20. She is the catcher. She'll be followed by number 19, the pitcher, Maggie Richardson. And a uh, little hesitation here. Arnold steps out of the box. Of course, she was our catch. She is up in front of the plate, also in the box. Now, you do have to stay in that box. One down, runner at third. This one hit off the fist a little bit, caught by the shortstop. We'll call it a soft liner to the shortstop for the second out. Maggie Richardson can help her own cause wearing number 19. Richardson, the batter. And, of course, she is uh, such a great pitcher. 
had some great outings. We did a duel between her and I forgot the young lady for Tipton Rosemark. And again, the, her back foot is at the corner. The plate, of course, is in a pentagon shape. Has five sides to it. You throw out of the circle, not a mound in fast pitch softball. And that one is right down Main Street, brought that number one pitch. Whittemore, the pitcher for the Hornets of South Gibson, Hannah Wilson catching. Of course, the catch, you'll see the catchers peer into the dugout and get the signs. Got that softball catcher's mitt on. Here's one. Will it get up the middle? Yes, it will. One run across the plate, and the Lady Eagles lead one to nothing as Brooks touches the plate. So an RBI single for McKinley Arnold. She gets her first hit. And bringing up to the plate is number nine, uh, 19. Well, actually, that is number 11. Laney Millsaps, the third baseman. And we'll put some notations here in the book. If you can get one past the pitcher up the middle, it's going to get through because the shortstop shades towards the hole and the second baseman is a little bit towards first base the pitcher really has to be a middle infielder of sort only from the pitching mound, and the ball can come back quite quickly. This one a pitch high. We're going to go as it got out of the catcher's glove and going into second base safely is Maggie Richardson. Two outs in the inning, a one ball, one strike count. Jackson Christian leads one to nothing. On a beautiful but windy day, here's one drill to the shortstop for the third out in the inning. So Millsaps, that was a hard liner, and that ends that inning. But we picked up one run on two hits, had one man left on base. And at the score at the end of one inning of play, Jackson Christian won the South Gibson Hornets nothing. Let's take a timeout. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. This car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Hello folks, this is Gary Deaton, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor warranty on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. Back for the top of the second. Richardson on the mound, winds, fires. That one goes high. That was that rise ball then, or at least from this angle. We are operating from the first base side. The press box here is to the first base side, not behind. A little harder to tell what the pitches are from the side. Here's the second pitch, and that one's a strike. Evens the count at one ball, one strike. Leading off for South Gibson is number 20, Hallie Allen. She's the third baseman. Richardson checks her wristband for the pitch as they are signaled in. That one comes high. And Brooklyn Davidson on deck. Davidson wears number seven with the orange numbers on their uniforms. And the umpire says it's three and one now. Three balls, one strike. You really don't want to put people on. Let's see if Richardson comes down Main Street. She's got change up, rise ball. This one on the ground of the shortstop. Kind of juggles it over to first. Let's see, and they say they got her. 
You score that six to three in your scorebook for the first out of the inning. It brings up number seven, Brooklyn Davison. She'll be followed by the pitcher, zero, Emmy Whitmore on deck. And that one, boy, that one was coming. It was burnt but came high. So it's a one ball, no strike count, one out. Wind blowing out towards right center field, and it is a stiff breeze. And it changes, and you can hear it whistling in the mic sometimes. And a strike right over that inside corner. Boy, that one, it got the paint barely. And of course, we got white bases. The ones that don't know, you have to paint the bases before every ball game, and they're nice and white. Drill down the first baseline. Will it be fair? It is. And let's see if they hold her to a single. So a base hit for Brooklyn Davison with one out. She'll be at first, and that one was well placed. And we'll remind you that Emmy Whitmore wears the zero. And a lot of people like that number. There used to be a guy in football that wore double zero named Jim Otto in the NFL. And the first pitch, a little low. Now Richardson always throws hard and throws well. Uh, Thrown a few more balls than I saw her throw last year. And um, you can adjust your grip in the release. Took something off that one, a change up, couldn't get her to bite. So Whitmore up there with a two ball, no strike count. Runner on first, here's the pitch. This one drilled down the left field line. It hit the batting cage. Just don't pull it any further and don't hit the black Nissan Platinum Rogue out there. You can hit any other car, but don't hit that one. That just happens to be the announcer's car. <laughs> two balls, one strike. Richardson's pitch fouled off, evens the count at 2-2. Remember, Brooklyn Davison for South Gibson is at first base. Here's the wind up in the pitch, swinging strike three. That will be the second strikeout of the day. It's also the second out in this inning. Runner still at first, coming to the plate. Number 18, Hannah Wilson, the catcher. No ball, one strike count to Wilson. Probably is two, and the umpire agrees with me. It's a no ball, two strike count with two outs in the inning, a runner at first. And now the third base coach comes down to talk to the umpire. Let's see if we can recap this thing. Um, they grounded out for the first out. Now they're going to talk to the infield umpire. They may change the count. I'm, I thought the pitch was a strike whether she swung at it or not. But what I think doesn't count, the umpires, they do a good job and they have a tough. Now we need to give the count. I've got no balls and two strikes and two outs, but uh, the coach was asking for a change. Here's the pitch. This one, will it go foul? Catcher gets it in fair territory, throws it out. So catcher to first. That's two to one on your scorebook, two being the position, or two to three. For the third out of the innings, no runs, one hit. No errors, and one person left on base. The score at the end of one and one-half innings of play, Jackson Christian won. South Gibson nothing. Let's take a timeout. At Lonnie Kyle Ford, we now give you a warranty for life on the engine and transmission. That's right, a warranty for life at no cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, but it's only at Lonnie Kyle Ford and Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Great American Sports makes sports an addiction. 
located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson. We specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour, and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your teen sports. You can email or call us for all your teen sports needs. Great American sports. Make sports an addiction. Did you know that Lonnie Kyle Ford's Warranty for Life is available on pre-owned vehicles too? That's right, a warranty for life on a used car. And with our huge selection of over 100 vehicles, we have the one for you. Lonnie Kyle Ford and Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. And we are back, and we'll have a little wind noise today. It is really blowing hard. I'm going, going to check and see who and what on the weather. But Carly Holt wears number 21. So number 21, the first baseman, hits left-handed. But now she hits for power, wearing that knee brace. You can check it out on the right leg. Missed all of basketball season this year. But she is a very good player, has that wide stance. Up at the front of the box, has very little room or she'll be out of the box with the front foot. And that pitch is a strike. She gets her pitch. We could ask for a new softball because she can hit them out there. She's strong enough to do it. Has a brother that plays football and basketball. And two strikes on her. A little color on her. Her mom played for myself and Richard Foster over at Northside and was one of the great shooters. It just happened at that time we didn't have a softball team and Carly plays both. Dad was a good athlete too. That one low, one and two the count. Holds up at the plate. They're completely straight away for her in the outfield. Wind blowing out hard, and you can probably hear it whistling off of my mic. And it's not like uh, where you can have wind screens and stuff with the hand mics when you have headsets. Swinging strike three for the first out in the inning. So one out, and that brings up number 18, Sydney Julian, who is the designated player. She just hits, doesn't play in the field. Strong right-handed batter. And, of course, Julian is always a threat to get on. She has great speed, had 15 stolen bases, scored the winning run in a 10-inning sub-state game last year. Two ball, no strike count to her. Here's one hit on the ground. Third baseman comes up, fires over the first in time for the second out of the inning. So two up and two down so far. Holt and Julian out, and that should bring up Kendall Turner, who wears number two. Number two. And Kendall Turner, a very good player. Remember some of those plays that she made last year. This is not last year. We want to go back to the state this year. So Turner with nobody on and two out. She's up towards the front of the box. Third baseman actually steps up in this one. Ground ball back to the pitcher. She goes to first with it. It's a one, two, three inning, no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base at the end of two full innings of play. Jackson Christian one, South Gibson nothing. Let's take a timeout. Welcome to Man's Record Service. We offer a wide array of services. We are dedicated towing professionals, experienced in both simple and complicated towing services. We offer light and heavy-duty off-road recovery, auto and heavy-duty towing, load shift and load transfer capabilities, and much more. We are equipped to handle any situation, no matter how big or how small. Call today at 731-424-2173. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, 
Trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. And we are ready for the top of the third. Two innings have gone by. Jackson Christian has the only run. An RBI single by Maggie Richardson drove in the leadoff batter, Trinity Brooks, in that inning. And the Lady Eagles back out in the field. Number four up at bat for the Hornets. And that is Jesse Stringer, the shortstop. There's one popped up, coming down to catcher under it, makes the basket type catch with the catcher's mitt. So one out in the inning. That'll bring up Mary Teague, who wears number one. She plays center field for them. Number one, Mary Teague. One out in the inning. And not a lot of shifting. Third baseman may adjust a step or two. But one out. Richardson's ready, comes to the plate. And the, I guess the umpire said that one was inside a little bit. Interesting. Thought it might have grabbed a little bit of the black edge of the plate. And we remind you, we're in the third inning, and here's a ground ball. Great play by Richardson. Goes up, gets it, juices one over to first. And she had a little juice on it. One to three for the second out in the inning. And that's going to bring up number three, Sydney Scott, the left fielder, who struck out her first time up. I believe she struck out swinging. You can check her out as far as the footwork. She's there in the kind of the middle of the box. Bitch goes outside, and you'll notice different stances, and, and players want to do different things. They get a comfort spot. Now, there's a few players. They've got one down at Freed Hardeman who changes position in the box depending on who's pitching. There's one driven. That one is hard. I'm going to score the base hit. We'll wait and see what the official score scores it, but that was a hard hit ground ball, and there is a runner at first now. So Scott at first with number 15, Haley DeLassis. Coming to the plate, the last is grounded out third to first. And we'll see what the umpire or the official score actually scores that one. And they are given a single eye, and that is the correct scoring. Great job by the score. Delassus up there. She's a right-handed hitter. And that one right on that edge that I was telling you about. Of course, a little dust, and you can't hardly see the black edge of the plate right now. But the black edge of the plate is a strike. Again, we'll remind you, you're throwing from the circle, not from the mound. Hit to the third baseman. Scooped up. Over to first for the out. And that will make it the third out. Five to three again. She ground out twice there. There was no runs. One hit. No errors, one person left on base, and the score at the end of two and one-half innings of play. Jackson Christian won, South Gibson nothing. Let's take a timeout. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. Shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's Body Shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. Oh. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Men, there's a new salon in Jackson Race Clips on South Highland next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. 
Okay, they've already thrown the ball down, but number seven, Bailey Robinson, a freshman, is up to bat. She can pitch, but normally plays second base. She's playing second today. I'll tell you, a little more. Ava Jones, of course, graduated there. And a good hitter. Got a piece of that one, but fouled it off against the screen wall over to the third base side. And remember, we do everything we can on foul balls to protect the black Nissan Rogue. Yeah, actually, we want to protect all the cars. Just teasing, having a little fun. Here's the pitch. Goes high. Whittemore, good pitcher for the South Gibson team that comes from Medina, Tennessee. They have a 13-3, I believe, was the score of victory over Jackson Christian. Uh, we have only two losses, and that's one of our two losses on the season. This one is sky high. It could be a can of corn in the infield. Third baseman gets it, and that retires Robinson. And that one, we kept waiting for it to come down. If it had gone about five feet higher, it would have drawn rain, which we are Number expecting 15, late tonight. Trinity Brooks. And here comes... Our leadoff person, number 15, Trinity Brooks, the left fielder, who scored the only run in this ball game. She's at the back of the box. She is a slap hitter. And if you'll watch her footwork, she'll start moving towards attacking the ball and try to slap it to left field. She can pull, though. Don't think she can't. But, now, again, it's interesting to watch her swing and how she attacks the basketball or the baseball. I'm I'm so used to Trinity making steals, plays, and things in basketball. We had a good basketball season with the young ladies this year. Here's a bunt. Let's just see if the speed. The third base one is up quick. Did they get her? And I don't think so because you can see, no, she is safe. So Brooks is on again, and that's danger. This time she's on with one out. Number 17, Audrey Dean. You probably heard our fine PA announcer in the background. And we'll see what they scored her. Dean up in the front of the box. Experienced player, one of the starters back from last year. Of course, Dean was last year. Oh, she's got one out in center field. Will it get out of here? No, the wind this time blowing back in. It changed, held it up, and the center fielder made a nice catch. So you score that F8 for the second out. And I don't know why the wind whipped around, but it held that one up. It was headed out of here. And I was going to ask for a new softball. And, and you can see the change. If we get a shot of that, folks, check that flag out. It is blowing in hard now. And that's what kept her from a home run. The hitter is number 20, McKinley Arnold, the catcher. They have backed up for her. The left fielder is about three feet from the fence. This one drilled up the middle. Brooks will head to third. We're going to have a play at third. She gets down and she's safe. All right, exciting play there. Single for Arnold. She's at first. Brooks advances to third on a bang, bang play there. Diving in head first, and that brings up the pitcher herself. Number 19, Maggie Richardson. Maggie has thrown a very fine game to this point. Only given up, I believe, one hit. We'll check that here in a few moments, but uh, there are no runs on the board. And, folks, that is the important stat. Jackson Christian has the other important stat. They have one. We're in the bottom of the third. Whittemore looks in, comes to the plate. This one, will it get over the infield's head? Brooks will score. One run is scored, and they throw it away, but there will be no chance for advancement. Nice backup by the left fielder for Gibson County. Did a really good job getting over there, and that was Sidney Scott. So, runners at first and second. And uh, we're getting to some hits now. Number 11, Laney Millsaps, the third baseman. So we've got runners at first and second. Two outs. They'll be running with the crack of the bat. Holtz on deck. Here's one to the shortstop. Sidearm throw to first, and that will get the batter. But that will end the inning. 
we picked up another run, and with at the end of three innings play, Jackson Christian two, and South Gibson nothing. Let's take a timeout. Over seven years ago, God called Brandy Reagan into a new career as a realtor. Seven plus years later, Brandy is a multi-million dollar producer, broker, and owner of Reagan Realty Group. Brandy believes God will always give her what he wants her to have. Brandy loves helping clients find their dream homes, and she believes each and every home has a story to tell. So call Brandy today at 731-410-7700 and let her help tell your story. Go Eagles! And we're back for the top of the fourth. South Gibson trailing two to nothing. You see a great throwdown with a little zip on it. Leading off for them in the fourth. Should be number five, the second baseman, Gracie Mullins, number five, and it is, wearing Joe DiMaggio and Johnny Bench's old number. That's number five is a good number. I was a little partial to that one, too. Wore that a few times playing baseball. But the two important people with five was DiMaggio and Johnny Bench, both Hall of Famers. There are other people that have worn that number. Here's one hit up in the air. Brooks drifts back, camps under it, thumps the mitt, puts it away for the first out. So one away in the fourth, and that brings up number 20, Hallie Allen, who plays third base. And again, if you're scoring, that's F7 is the way they do that. And this is a tough field to play in because you can see the wind keeps changing directions. It's blowing in, but it'll blow in towards right field. It'll blow in towards left field. Here's another one up in the air. Looks like Brooks is going to get to handle her second chance very easily. Another F7 for the second out of the inning, and that's going to bring up number seven, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Davidson. Brooklyn Davidson, who is playing first base. The pitcher... Emmy Whitmore on deck for them, but and she'll make her appearance now, but get that extra rest because even though it's softball, it's still hard on your legs as a pitcher. Got under this one, fouled it straight back. No ball, one strike count with two outs, no runners on. Wind picking up again, this time blowing hard in towards right field instead of out. If it had been blowing out when Dean hit hers, it would have gone. Here's the pitch. Fouled off to the right, so a no ball, two strike count. Let's see what Maggie Richardson will come up with. Of course, the, again, you look at the dugout. Catcher does. The pitcher will check also, and the, you give direction on it. Oh, perfect pitch. Caught her looking. That's a strikeout. You put the K backwards when you get a strikeout for the third inning. This one will be easy to do. In the top of the fourth for South Gibson, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. The score at the end of three and one half innings of play, Jackson Christian two, South Gibson nothing. Let's take that time out. 27 years ago, a vision became a reality and Snookum Steakhouse officially opened. We cut our steaks in-house and our ribeyes are full of flavor. The steak trimmings are used to make our certified Angus beef steak burgers, so when you order at Snookums, you're getting high quality. Enjoy our salad bar and mini dessert. Also try our famous family recipe, the Pink Lush Fruit Salad. Come visit Snookum Steakhouse in Henderson, Tennessee. We are open evenings Tuesday through Saturday, but close Sunday to Monday. Snookum Steakhouse, come taste the difference. And we're back as they throw it down. A good shot by the catcher for South Gibson. Wilson, Hannah Wilson does a good job for them. Very tight ball game, two to nothing. We're in the bottom of the fourth. We're at Jackson Christian School. Beautiful outfield. And of course, you have the skinned surface in fast pitch softball. And coming to the plate, number 21, Carly Holt. Carly, of course. Uh, a freshman, plays first base, played last year as an eighth grader and had 18 RBIs. Left-handed hitter up towards the front of the plate. Here's the fastball. It was a little low, and that was in her wheelhouse. Didn't make contact. 
I think even with the wind blowing in, she makes contact on that one. It's out of the park. No ball, one strike count. Whittemore looks over to the dugout. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Boy, she brought that one in there. Here is the 0-2 pitch hit on the ground. Second baseman backhands it, goes to first, and throws it away. Uh, that's probably an error. We'll wait for the official scoring on that one. Let go of it a little high. She reached across her body to field it with her glove hand, which is on her left hand. Had to go across the right side. Doesn't make any difference. It's a runner on first, and we'll get that official scoring here in just a minute. And it is an error. E4. And bringing to the plate is 18, Sidney Julian, the designated player. They think she's bunting. They guess right, but they'll have to go to first with it. So the sacrifice bunt is executed, and they throw in behind the runner. So this does not count as an official at bat. And uh, the runner is out at first, one out, but a runner in scoring position, and that's Holt. And that... Brings up number two, Kendall Turner, the shortstop. Kendall is one, or she is 0 for 1 so far today. Grounded out pitcher to first. And, of course, Kendall hit 304 as a freshman, and that's pretty good. She is just a sophomore this year, can catch and starts at shortstop. Hitting about 231 right now. Averages, you'll see them go up as the season goes along. The wind and fire. This one hit into the ground. It's going to get out on the ground. It's in the power alley to the right side. One run will score, and cruising in with a stand-up double is Kendall Turner, and that's a big hit and an RBI there also. And she gets that. Holt scores. So it's now three to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth, and that brings up number seven, Bailey Robinson, who is the second baseman. Now, the third baseman is back a little bit, and with one out, don't know if Bailey will be bunting or not. She's a very capable hitter. Remember, she is a freshman. That one hit oh, past. It's a base hit. They're going to challenge the plate. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. Now they've got the runner hung up. But the, let's see if the runner can get back and does because the throw gets away but no advancement, and it looks like the fourth run of the game has come across the plate. And... Uh, We've got one in the first, one in the third, and now here two in the bottom of the fourth for a total of four runs. Catcher wisely goes out to talk to Whitmore. Boy, Bailey Robinson tattooed that one. Back to the top of the order, Trinity Brooks, who's been on base both times up there. She wears 15. Brooks the left-handed hitter, but throws right-handed. Whitmore's got her sign and coming to the plate. It throws like a change up to her. And that one is grounded for the second out, unassisted to the first baseman. Two outs. Number 17, Audrey Dean. And a runner on the second. Remember, Dean took it deep, and the wind is the only thing that kept it in the park. She's 0 for 2 today, but could have easily been 1 for 2. Pitch a little low, got the corner, but it was too low to call a strike. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Whitmore comes to the plate with it. Here's one that's going to fall. The base hit. Will they challenge? And they're waving. Coach Phillips waving on. Going to try to play at the plate. She's down and safe. A nice piece of base running and a nice hit. So Robertson scores. It's 5 nothing now here in the bottom of the fourth. Audrey Dean with her first hit, an RBI. And she will advance to second on the throw. And that brings up McKinley Arnold. Now, McKinley has... 
two hits today, or actually one hit because uh, Miss scored in one for two today. She has home run power. I saw her drill a couple out of here last year. We don't get to do all the games, but this game will be archived on YouTube tonight under Worthy Road Studios. The pitch low and away for a ball. Worthy Road Studios and Jackson Christian brings you basketball, football, soccer, softball, and who knows what other sports in the future we're going to add. Uh, it's a great partnership between Worthy Road Studios and Jackson Christian. Here's second pitch fouled off. Evens count at one and one with two outs. Runner at second. And again, this game, if you want to go back and watch it again, it'll be archived on YouTube tonight. And uh, Worthy Road Studios uh, not only does these games and stuff, they do church services, funerals. Uh, we've done boxing. We also have done uh, rodeos. Here's one drilled out into the gap. It's going to get down. One more run streaking towards the plate, and they'll hold the hitter, Kenley Arnold, to an RBI single. But another run is in. It is 6 nothing. We're in the fourth, and one of the coaches are going to come out for South Gibson. Richardson will be your, your hitter, number 19, when she does get to come to the plate. Let's see if they're going to make a change or just talk about what they need to do. Um, game was rocking along very close. Some people like to call it a white knuckler. I think this was more a word of encouragement, maybe a release point question and some things like that but runner at first with two outs you've got Maggie Richardson up there who singled her last time up matter of fact she singled and drove in a run in the first inning two outs Whitmore checks the dugout for the pitch catcher got it too they signal them in to pretty good pitch right there and uh, I don't know who's back there, but they're really taking a chance because if I were to throw this hand back uh, with my martial arts skill, they would be dead. <laughs> and uh, there's a strike. One strike or two strikes it is. That's my uh, game changer's not keeping up with because I'm having to call part of this game for me. There's a ball. Two outs in the inning. There are always comedians that like to fool with the announcers when they're trying to focus. Nice drive down the third baseline, but it's foul. And Coach Phillips, he doesn't even need a glove. He just feels it like an old pro. One ball, two strikes, six nothing your score, runner on first. Whitmore into the windup, coming to the plate, another foul ball. And they'll South Gibson pick it up. I think they should let Coach Coach Phillips make the play on that. And I see Larry Lewis. Larry almost died a second ago and he doesn't know how close he came. When I'm focused, uh they actually wake me up at home with a stick. They don't shake me. Oh, that one. A worm burner for a strike. And Larry's going to argue with me, but that was not a strikeout. But it does count as one. What I say doesn't matter. But in this inning, four big runs cross the plate, and Jackson Christian leads at the end of four, six to nothing. Let's take a timeout. Southern Family Dentistry's dental laser technology is a game changer for those who experience dental anxiety. Southern Family Dentistry provides a relaxing environment to ensure a pleasant visit every time. From a simple cleaning to full dental reconstruction and now prepless veneers, they're there when you need them. Dr. Nathan Nash will treat your family like he wants his family treated. Check them out on Facebook or call 300-4545. Southern Family Dentistry, we want to make you smile. We are back here in the distinguished, and he doesn't like me to say this, but I'll say it anyway, probably the most knowledgeable. If you want to know a rule 
And if I don't know something, I call him and ask him. And uh, his fairness and kindness and, you know, what uh, – I'm going to brag on him a little bit because we need officials. And, that, and Larry it doesn't have a mic, but he'll tell you. It's getting – we're going to play – everybody's going to play a Thursday night game. Matter of fact, Jackson Christian's game against USJ will be a Thursday night game. I don't like Thursday night games. But it's a necessary evil, but, and we've created it. Oh, this one driven to right field. But the right fielder camping under it, and I believe that is Blankenship for the out. Nice drive, but all to no avail. So one out in the inning. It looks like Hannah Wilson should be up at the plate, and it is wearing number 18. And F9 if you're scoring it in the book. But, folks, we the fans – and broadcasters have created the menace that is causing a lot of people not to want to officiate. And uh, here's one. Oh, good. A little uh, snow cone there, but the third baseman, great job. Holt did her thing with the glove, and we've got two outs in this inning. So that brings up number four, Jesse Stringer. Jesse is 0 for 1 in the contest. Popped up the catcher the last time up. Six nothing your score. We're in the top of the fifth. This one up in the air. About 10 feet higher, and that one would have drawn rain, but it didn't. And if a frog had a hip pocket, he'd tote a gun, carry credit cards, and have money. What we do have is three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And at the end of four and one half innings of play, Jackson Christian six and South Gibson nothing. Let's take a timeout. We are a team, a team composed of highly skilled physical therapists with new school treatment approaches and old school customer service principles. We are a community presence because we know our foundation rests in relationship building and involvement. We are leaders in this industry and we're putting in time daily to develop that aspect of thinking. We're more than a business. We're a team composed of individuals governed by a set of core values. We're more than a physical therapy company. We're a movement in the profession. We are your premier physical therapy team in West Tennessee. And we are back. And see Coach up here uh, evidently giving some instructions on scoring. Or doing a great job coaching first. Of course, Coach Phillips over there, he uh, – he coaches a little football, and uh, he's a great radio guy. Sometimes he comes in. Coach Bullard and I host the Jackson Christian. Uh, it's usually on Tuesday night um, sports roundup show during the fall season. And, and Coach, uh, he's got a great personality. Uh, Coach Bullard was my color man in basketball, but we were going to let him. Uh, we were going to let him do some uh, color while Brian was out, but. Uh, you know how the season goes. Sometimes games get changed around, and that happened. And Jackson Christian back up at bat, and I believe this is Laney Millsap. She wears number 11. She plays third base. She's looking for her first hit. She's 0 for 2 up at the front of the box. Here comes the pitch, and it's a ball. Now, let's check the pitching situation out. I believe that is number 24 in for them. And 24 is Olivia, Olivia Pickard. Pickard now pitching. Tries to throw the change. Olivia Pickard pitching. And we'll check and see if since they don't have a designated player in this game. So it would be a straight substitution then without the designated player. I have to think back, going back for the rules and stuff, and they're not much difference in high school in college, but I've done a game for free this year, and that got me thinking. And draws a walk, did a good job of working for that walk. So Laney goes to first with no outs, and we've been able to make hay while the sun shine. We're in the fifth. Four more runs ends this contest. Uh, there is a 10-run rule after five. What is it, 20 after three, Larry? 
whatever the coaches agree to. Carly Holt wearing 21, left-handed hitter. And like I said, the wind is blowing in again, but Carly's got the strength to put one out of here. Audrey Dean, a couple of innings ago, the wind hadn't been blowing in. It had plenty of air in it. It was going, and you could almost see the ball slowing down with the wind resistance. We'll go ahead and check the weather and see what I can get on it. 72 degrees, though. Partly cloudy here's pitch, and the umpire says, no, it wasn't. And it's three balls, no strikes. Anybody here in the dugout want to disagree? I bet she's got the take sign. If she doesn't, I'll be in shock because I thought I saw it given. Here's the 3-0 pitch, ball four. And now there are two runners on. You've got Holt at first. Mill Saps has advanced to second. There are no outs. Here comes the head coach. And it's striding to the plate. Number 18, Sydney Julian. She'll have to wait. She's going to go back and talk to Coach Phillips. Paul had to leave the press box so that Larry could come in. And not because of anything. We, we are kind of cramped right now, aren't we? We're teasing. Here comes Paul Schultz, and uh, we love Larry to death. I just don't want him to scare old folks have heart attacks sometimes, Larry. <laughs> Larry getting to meet our director, Summer Sturgis, who always does a good job. She'll be with us, and she did a great job in basketball, and she'll be with us in football next year, and we're going to have a big old time. Here's the pitch with two runners on. South Gibson was expecting a bunt. And uh, Sydney Julian up there. People sending me information all the time. I don't want to know what it is at Pigeon Forge, folks. Uh, Jackson, Tennessee, oh, no, 71. So we got a strike now. The hitter is Sydney Julian, 0 for 2. Well, actually, 0 for 1 officially. She sacrificed her last time up. You do not count that against him as a time at bat. And the pitch. Outside. Well, I don't know. The game changer people said, let's see if they change it. Okay, fouled off, and we know we got two strikes now. It should be one ball, two strikes for sure. And again, sometimes they do a great job of game changer, but you got to go back and change it every once in a while. And uh, see if we can get what the wind's blowing at. Here's the pitch, just missing outside. What that Bob Euchre, even though it wasn't that close, Bob Euchre said just a little bit outside in major movie Major League. We're in the sixth, I mean fifth, six nothing the score. This one's going to be infield fly rule, I think. Yeah, automatically out, should be. And the runners advance at their own risk, which they didn't do. So you got a. Pop up to the shortstop. First out in the inning. Kendall Turner, who had a big RBI double her last time up. She's one for two. Turner Kendall wears number two. Turner. The shortstop, number two, Kendall Turner. It's up at the front of the box. Boy, a hit here, and I guarantee you the runner at second will score, unless it's just a BB to somebody. Oh, she was going for the downs on that one, but a swinging strike one. If Kendall had gotten hold of that one, we might be chasing the ball over there to Hub City Deli. And another one, a fast ball versus the fast swing, and it's 0-2 now the count with one out. Got to score four to get the 10-run rule. So need a big hit. That one just missing. Kendall has better eyes than I do. I probably would have swung. and she, she That's the reason she's playing and I'm sitting up here. Pops this one up. It's going to be, a, in, should be infield fly also on that one. Even if they had dropped it, it would have been the second out of the inning. So now with two outs, Bailey Robinson comes up to the plate. Bailey scored Number back seven. in the fourth. Bailey Robinson. 
And of course, uh, Bailey has a chance to put some on the board. And he's a nice, strong young lady. Runners will be running at the crack of the bat, or actually the ping of the bat, since we play with metal bats. I think I think Larry Lewis ought to get a rule passed that we go back to wooden bats. They're safer. Can't afford it. You're right, Larry. That pitch missed. As we said, Robinson at bat. The outfield straight away. A little down. They come in a little bit in center field. Oh, that one has to be right down Main Street for a strike. Got one and one to count with two outs, two runners on. Now, if we could get a two ball, two strike, two out, and two runners on count, we could say deuce is wild. But if we don't do that, we can't say it. And out at Pringles Park, they used to ring a bell when that would happen. Here's the pitch. Oh, a strike. So it's one ball, two strikes. Olivia Pickard on the, the mound. Here's the pitch. And now it is two balls, two strikes, two out. The deuces are wild here. The crack of the bat. Everybody will be moving. Now, if they don't swing, I hope they know what they're doing to steal right now. Here it is, going out into the power alley. Will the center fielder get there? A great catch by the center fielder. I mean, give that young lady a hand. Mary Tig with a great play, and we may have to send that one in or make a highlight out of that one, but she made the play. And... Um, that will end the inning. No runs in the inning, so the score at the end of five remains Jackson Christian six and South Gibson nothing. Let's take a timeout. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the... Southern Family Dentistry's dental laser technology is a game changer for those who experience dental anxiety. Just imagine, no more drills. Look at some of Dr. Nathan Nash's patient results. We provide a relaxing environment to ensure a pleasant visit every time. From a simple cleaning to a full dental reconstruction. And now, prepless veneers. We're there when you need us. Dr. Nathan Nash will treat your family just like he wants his family treated. Check them out on Facebook to see all those loving smiles. Call 300-4545. Southern Family Dentistry, we want to make you smile going into the top of the six south gibson from medina tennessee will be coming to bat and i believe that the young lady that just made the great catch mary tig will be leading it off how many times does that happen in baseball and softball very fitting she wants to get something going for her team that don't have any runs at this point. And let's see if we can refresh our game changer stats. Six nothing the score. Maggie Richardson on the mound with another good performance. Takes a little off of it and a swinging strike by Tig. She's now 0-1 at the plate. There we go, game changer. A little slow sometimes. And it's actually my iPad doing that. Here's the pitch. Nice pitch, but it's inside. Just missed, and it was a ball. So one and one to count. No outs. After a great catch, Mary Tig, the center fielder, leading off. Where's number one? Here's one. It's going to fall. Shortstop has to come in, and it squirts away from her. And I'm going to score to hit. We'll wait for game changer, but that's a tough chance right there. And the way it spins, try picking that rascal up. So not only does she get a big play in the field, she gives her team a runner at first. And that brings up Sidney Scott, wears number three. Fouled off, and she had a healthy cut, and we had a rise ball coming in. 0-1 oh, to count with a runner at first. And let's see, they have not scored. They must be talking about it. And it is a single. 
And so I'm, I'm doing okay with my scoring today. No outs in the inning. Two strikes the count on the hitter. Here's one hit to right field. It's in the gap. Will it get over the fence? It is gone, and we're going to need a new softball. Two-run home run that tightens this game up. Now, down at Freight Hardeman, they do something I like. They have a cowboy hat. That if you hit a home run, you get to wear the cowboy hat for the rest of the inning. So a home run by Sidney Scott really tightens this up. Two RBIs. It's now a 6-2 ball game. Should be 6-2. There should have been a runner at first. You would have had the runner and the home run hitter. Here's one dribble on the ground but foul. And you can't hear Larry. Larry, how tough a call is that for the umpire? Because it's the position of the ball, but what – Fools fans is she's got a foot in the playing field. Yep. Two RBIs. Here's one drill to center field. Dean coming on and makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Dean with a nice running catch of that one. And it brings up number five, Gracie Mullins, the second baseman. Number 20. Allie Allen on deck. She plays third, but at the plate, five. Gracie Allen or Mullins. Here's one hit up in the air. It's going to be a tough chance for anybody, and it falls. That's one of those Texas leaguers. Some people like to say seeing eye singles. That's probably the only kind I ever got was seeing eye singles. You couldn't have picked it up and thrown it any better than the way that one fell. So base hit for Mullins with one out and a runner at first after this game was tightened up by the Scott home run. Richardson comes to the plate with a little zip on it. And the umpire, I can see that fist out there. Strike one. One out in the inning. And you see them, they look to the dugout and check the wristband. That one a little inside. That was to chase all the bugs and stuff away. They were trying to do the hitter a favor then. Now, if they throw it under the chin, then it's got a purpose. Swinging strike two, so one ball, two strikes the count. One out, a runner on first. Maggie Richardson pitching. McKinley Arnold, the catcher. You got 19 and 20. 19 on the mound, 20 catching. Here's the pitch. Just missing, and it evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Only one runner on. Everybody's on their toes. We're pretty well straight away in the outfield. Swinging strike, hanging tough, though. Allie Allen, and you got to do that. Work that pitcher, make them throw. No, it, it, it was a foul tip. And if you can't hear, I'm the only one with a headset today on. We, we're in smaller quarters than usual. And that one is the backwards K, meaning that they got caught looking. And I'm not sure that everybody saw it the same way. But you know what? There's only one person right on any of these calls. It doesn't matter. The umpire, what they say is gospel unless there was some error in administration of a rule. Popped up. Should be over the press box. And remember, the press box here is on the first baseline side. In baseball, we actually work out of our mobile studio over there. And then we'll have baseball if it doesn't rain tomorrow. Dyersburg's supposed to be coming to down. Here's Richardson's pitch. Fouled off again, and it's quickly an 0-2 count. And I, I would say right now, Richardson would like to zip one by the hitter or fool her some way. The question is, do you throw... A low inside fastball, low outside, or do you throw the rise ball here? That's a good question. Yeah. Now, our coaches obviously have scouted more than we have. This will be our first softball game of the year. Here's the pitch. Just missing. 
leads to the excitement. Now you've got two balls, two strikes, and two outs, but you don't have two runners on. Just a runner on first base. 6-2 your score. We're in the top of the sixth inning. We play seven in high school softball. Fouled off again, and I'm going to tell you what, she is hanging tough. Brooklyn Davidson up there wearing number seven. And uh, Brooklyn had a hit back in the second and struck out in the fourth, I believe. She's one for two on the night, a very capable hitter. Davidson lost one and going back, back, back is Brooks at the fence. It's a snow cone catch, meaning a little of the ball showing, but guess what? She held on, and that is the third out of the inning. And what a big play by Trinity Brooks. We've had a couple of really fine catches here, but two runs scored on a home run in that inning, and we'll go to the bottom of the six after the timeout between innings. Buying a car is all about you. In person, over the phone, or online, we make it simple and easy. Our place is yours no matter where you live. LonnieCobbFord.com or Lonnie Cobb Ford in Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Hello folks, this is Gary Dean, right here at Deaton's Carpet One. I want to let you know we've been in business for 48 years. Here's what I believe has made the difference. Our lifetime labor warranty on everything we install. Our healthy living installation, bacteria and germs cannot survive in our new flooring. Our beautiful guarantee, if you don't just love it, we'll replace it. It will make your flooring experience priceless. We're located on Freedom Highway, 1000 Highway 45 Bypass in good old Jackson, Tennessee. And we are back for the bottom of the six. And I was talking to Larry off air. Uh, Maggie Richardson, a very good young pitcher. Reminds me a little bit of a girl that uh, named McKenna that threw down at Humphreys Academy. They have similar, both of them are very good pitchers. Looks like Trinity Brooks will lead it off here in the six. And she is two for three today. Has scored two runs, is a slap hitter, and she's pretty good at doing that. And uh, not every slap hitter can do it. I've seen her pull one as she advances to the plate. But she's working to get it on the ground or drive it into left field. Hard to defense. And uh, she can also bunt off this. That's the reason the third baseman doesn't back up. Brooks at bat, strike one swinging. Here's the second pitch. And uh, that is ball one. So a one and one count. No outs in the inning. I appreciate whoever's doing the game changer because that's what I can see. We do have a small window to look out in uh, the scoreboard operator and public address announcer, and I have to squeeze out of the same window. That one looks low for ball uh, two. Well, let's see, they're behind now on Game Changers. I was bragging on them, and it may not be them. It may be the signal I'm getting. Here's the pitch, so that will take it full then. Brooks in the back of the box with no outs. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a base hit. It's going to get down, and that's what slap hitters do. And... Uh, She's a threat to go. She can steal, even with a good arm catcher. I've seen this kid steal. You know, last year, Tipton Rosemark had a kid with a cannon for a catcher, and she stole a couple of bases on that young lady. Number, so, 17. number 17, Audrey Dean coming to the plate. Audrey Dean. Here's the pitch, swinging strike. Well, that was up in. That's where you want to hit the home run, but it really doesn't come from that pitch all the time. You want to get it down a little lower and drive it. So an 0-1 count. Here's the pitch, high. So one and one the count. And of course, uh, a lot of things going on here in the press box. Wow, even people want to get in on the advertisements on the Weather Channel. 
There's a swinging strike for strike two. The Weather Channel never did give us the uh, wind speed. Shame on them. And I was looking for it. Here's the one-two pitch coming in a swinging strike three. So Dean goes down for the first out of the inning, bringing up McKinley Arnold, the catcher. McKinley had a base hit back in the third and also in the fourth. Had an RBI in the fourth. So number 20, McKinley Arnold comes to the plate up towards the front of the box. Got a little room to step forward. Of course, the chalk line's pretty well erased by now anyway in the front of the box. And that one, umpire gives it a nice long look and indicates it's ball one. Wind picks up again, blowing in completely from center field this time. And you would think, you know, this field is down a little lower. We got the hill behind it, but wind still gets in here from the south. Here's the pitch. Dribbler on the ground, picked up by the pitcher. Goes to first with it and got the runner going to first. So two outs in the inning, but a runner at second. And if that ball's down on the ground, unless it's a scorcher out in the outfield, Trinity Brooks can score. And uh, it would take four runs in the top of the seventh to tie this game up, but you never know what's going to happen. And this, this is the pitcher, number 19, 19, Maggie Richardson. Lining it up with the bunt, but I guarantee she's picking the bunt up. Steps out now, asks for time. Gets over and gets loose with a good rip. And now she's going to show the bunt again, but she's not bunting, as I told you. Look at the Le Brooks is trying to draw some action down there now. That's when you get the big lead and you stir a little dust up on the infield. And uh, unfortunately, with the wind doing like it is, it blew the dust back at Brooks right now. And that's the bad part. I, as a runner, you do. We'll show the bunt and draw it back. And third baseman ready to charge, but I can tell you, you don't need to charge. Ball two, two balls, no strikes, two outs. The swift Trinity Brooks on second base. Outfield deep and straight away. And Maggie Richardson is capable. She is the number five hitter, I believe number four hitter actually. She is capable of putting that thing a long way. And my game changer, I think, is freezing up on me. Here's the pitch. That one's a strike. She was taking all the way. So it's a 3-1 count now. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Brooks will be leaving on the crack of the bat. And you saw her running, and uh, this one fouled off to the third base side and back a little bit. So it'll be 3-2 with two outs, no runner on first, so we can't even have a partial merry-go-round. Brooks will uh, – now, she'll make through – sure, it's through the infield. You don't want to run into a force out if it's hit to the left side. Here's the pitch. Popped up. It's going to get out of play. Somebody go protect the black Nissan Rogue. Well, I meant to park further up that way because last year we had a few a few softballs get over there right at the edge when you park up against the fence. Well, I tell you what now, the Weather Channel is not leaving us alone and they're not giving us any wind speed. I have to tell them that they owe us some money on the Weather Channel for not keeping up with things. Of course, I've got a free subscription, so I don't guess they owe me any money anyway. <laughs> we got a 3-1 count, or is it three? It should be 3-2 now. We've had two foul outs. And we'll foul another one off. I remind you that Olivia Pickard is the pitcher now, wearing 24 for them. Um, Emmy Whitmore started the game that wore zero, but she was relieved, had a tough four-run inning. Here's the pitch. 
And they call it a strike. That's one of those shoulder cutters. And actually arm, under the armpits is a strike. So no runs, one hit, no errors, one person left on base. And the score at the end of six, Jackson Christian six, South Gibson two will be back for the telltale seventh inning after this timeout. Great American Sports makes sports an addiction. Located at 125B Old Hickory Boulevard, East in Jackson, we specialize in teen sports for youth leagues, schools, and churches. We can embroider and screen print team uniforms. We also have sports equipment, Under Armour, and Adidas clothing, and anything else you need for your teen sports. You can email or call us for all your teen sports needs. Great American Sports, make sports an addiction. You up for South Gibson here in the top of the seventh is, let's see, Pinkley, Wilson, and Stringer. And we will check our rosters and see because we we don't get notified in the side press box of substitutions. And it's actually Pickard, so it is Pickard leading off. That's the substitute pitcher. And she drilled one down the third baseline, but it is foul. Now, Coach Phillips has al already caught one over there. I want their third base coach to catch one. So a no ball, one strike count, and this is Olivia Pickard up at the plate. I don't think she's any kin to Fred Pickard, who used to coach at the University of Tennessee Martin and a couple other places in college, but uh, a good family, the Pickards. A swinging strike, too, and she has a healthy cut. And their coach was kind enough to send me a roster. Unfortunately, my uh, printing machine at home decided it didn't want to print things right. It printed the names but did not print the grade that these young ladies are in. So our apology. There's another one drilled down the third baseline. 0-2, hits the fence. Good old fence over there. Trinity Brooks. Do you see how agile she was jumping up on the tarp to see if she could find the softball? We, we've got some great kids here at, at this school and uh, a lot of great academics going on. If you get a chance, come by and visit Jackson Christian. A lot of great athletics going on. And a lot of our young people multitask like the young man sitting next to me doing all kinds of stuff. Here we go. There's the ball. But that one had a little juice on it. Richardson, she was wanting it. She's trying to get her to chase one out of the strike zone. One ball, two strikes. Let's see if Maggie comes back and gets her with this one. And here the pitch comes. It had some zip on it. It was just barely low not being behind the plate with the press box off the side. I don't know if it got the corner, but it was too low to be a strike. Cannot be under the knees. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Drill to center field. It'll get down. Dean goes over to cut it off and does and will hold the hitter to a single. So Pickard is on with a single. I don't know if they will run for her or not. Uh, with her being the pitcher, you can run for. So Pickard gets a hit. They've got to have four runs to tie this one. Getting Trinity Brooks home would have been so important because if you load them up and get a grand salami or a grand slam, it's, it's really called, but some people do call them the grand salami, um, that could tie this ball game. Biggest thing now is to get the outs. And we would probably, strategy-wise, give up a run for an out, but you want to cut that lead runner off and not let them get ahead. Wilson up at the plate. It hit the second. Did they get her? Yes. Force out. Wilson grounds into a fielder's choice. So the first out of the inning comes five to four is how you score it. That's third to second. We wanted to turn the twin killing but couldn't. A lot of congestion down at second base. Runner got down properly. 
And let's see, somebody's subbing in, so let's see. We've got to pick up a number. That's the one thing I would change. This is number four. Now that's Stringer. She's still in there, so maybe they got to run her at first. Stringer didn't mean to. It goes back to the pitcher. She goes to second, and we have a throwing error. So Stringer is on with a – I'm going to give it an E1. I'm, that's tough scoring. But she's at first. Wilson's at second. And with a little bit of indecision. Sometimes your teammates need to help you and tell you where to go. And she did decide and maybe got some help we couldn't hear up here and went and we just didn't make connections on it. So with one out, you got runners at first and second. Coming to the plate is Mary Tigg, who had a single her last time at bat, a great play in center field. That inning, a high strike or a high ball that time. I started to say strike. It was over the shoulders, so it wasn't even close to being a strike. Maggie Richardson wanting to bear down. McKinley Arnold always gives her a good target to throw to. Got some speed in the outfield. That one comes inside and tight. Two ball, no strike count. And what you don't want to do is load the bases because the person coming to the plate after Tig is the home run hitting Sidney Scott. Now, there must be some people that are not in the dugout properly. And, and folks say, why do the umpires do that? It's for the players and the coaches' safety. And sometimes we get all miffed about things like that. I know in football, sideline warnings, people get kind of upset. And they shouldn't. That's part of the game. Safety. Nice pitch. No, he called it a ball. He started to call it a strike because he started to throw that fist out there. I've got three balls, no strikes. The umpire's got three balls, no strike. The scoreboard's got three and oh. And let's see if Tig is taking all the way. And let's see if we bring number one down Main Street. The release point, it was down Main Street for a strike. You know what? I'd be tempted. You hit my pitch. I can bring it. I have speed. And I can bring the softball. Let's see what coaches call for. It signaled in. Richardson in the wind up, the pitch. This one popped up in foul territory. Can Holt get there? And she did, evidently, because they're pointing at her. And, yes, she did. So Holt has retired the hitter. And the good thing is, even if you hit a home run, it's just 6-5. to five. The good news is, let's get her out. <laughs> and, and we're pulling. We're Jackson Christian's broadcast team. But uh, two outs in the inning. The runners will be going on anything. Kept it good. Don't let her extend her arms. Good pitch, even if it was a ball. Great job by Holt over here at first base getting there. And she has to lug that knee brace with her when she goes after something. Here's the pitch. A little low, so we're behind 2-0. and oh. This is a hitter's count. Sidney Scott is 2-3 for three on the day with that two-run two home run back in the six. We're in the seventh inning. Here's the pitch by Richardson. Swinging strike. Man, it's dramatic when it's like that. Scott wanted it all. Richardson says, I'm blowing it by you. Two one the count. Two outs. Two runners on. Let's see what the coaching staff comes up with for Richardson to throw. Oh, boy, that one. Perfect spot. You couldn't have hit it with a telephone pole then. And that's not one that – and Scott was wise. She didn't want that pitch. Now she's got to be more defensive. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on. The deuces are wild. We're in the top of the seventh. This is the telltale half of the seventh. It's up in the air. Will it get down? Brooks comes on and makes the running catch, and this ball game is over. Jackson Christian wins 6-2 to two to pick up their seventh victory over a very fine South Gibson team who had beaten them once earlier in the year. And what we're going to do while we try to get some stats together and things like that, we're going to take a timeout. We'll go back to our producer director, Summer Sturgis, for a timeout. Did you know that Lonnie Kai Ford's Warranty for Life is available on pre-owned vehicles too? That's right, a warranty for life on a used car. And with our huge selection of over 100 vehicles, we have the one for you. Lonnie Kai Ford and Henderson, where cars really are cheaper in the country. Welcome to Man's Record Service. We offer a wide array of services. We are dedicated towing professionals experienced in both simple and complicated towing services. 
We offer light and heavy-duty off-road recovery, auto and heavy-duty towing, load shift and load transfer capabilities, and much more. We are equipped to handle any situation, no matter how big or how small. Call today at 731-424-2173. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, they would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. He shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Men, there's a new salon in Jackson Race Clips on South Highland next door to Roland Safety and Supply. Whether it's a quick trim or a new look, Race Clips stylists can transform you to perfection. At Race Clips, you'll find all the products to keep you looking your best. Active duty military, veterans, and law enforcement officers receive a discount. Open Monday through Friday from 9 to 6, 9 to 3 on Saturday. Race Clips on South Highland, Jackson. Go to race-clips.com. Over seven years ago, God called Brandy Reagan into a new career as a realtor. Seven plus years later, Brandy is a multi-million dollar producer, broker, and owner of Reagan Realty Group. Brandy believes God will always give her what he wants her to have. Brandy loves helping clients find their dream homes, and she believes each and every home has a story to tell. So call Brandy today at 731-410-7700 and let her help tell your story. Go Eagles! 27 years ago, a vision became a reality and Snookum Steakhouse officially opened. We cut our steaks in-house and our ribeyes are full of flavor. The steak trimmings are used to make our certified Angus Beef Steak Burgers, so when you order at Snookum's, you are getting high quality. Enjoy our salad bar and mini dessert. Also try our famous family recipe, the Pink Lush Fruit Salad. Come visit Snookum Steakhouse in Henderson, Tennessee. We are open evenings Tuesday through Saturday, but closed Sunday to Monday. Snookum Steakhouse, come taste the difference. We are back at Jackson Christian School on Worthy Road Studio, streaming that you could get anytime we do a softball or baseball game on Jackson Christian's Facebook, Worthy Road Studios Facebook ball game blitz. I believe that this game may be even put on the WNWS.com Jackson Christian site. And tonight it'll be archived on YouTube. A great game, 6-2. The Lady Eagles win over the Lady Hornets of South Gibson. And uh, I know the coaches had some tense moments there with uh, Scott, who had hit a home run, but getting the Carly Holtz catch over here and then uh, Brooks finishing the game off with that running catch. But Jackson Christian takes it 6-2. to two. Jackson Christian Varsity opened up the scoring in the first inning with Maggie Richardson driving in one when Richardson uh, singled. Jackson Christian Varsity Eagles put up four runs in the fourth inning. Kendall Turner, Bailey Robinson, Audrey Dean, and McKinley Arnold all moved runners across the plate with RBIs in that inning. Richardson pitched the Eagles to victory. The right-hander surrendered. Two runs on six hits over seven innings, striking out four but walking zero, and that's an important stat. Emmy Whitmore took the loss for South Gibson. She went four innings, gave up six runs on eight hits, striking out two, and she didn't walk any either, so a good job on that for her. Jackson Christian racked up nine hits on the day. Uh, Richardson, Arnold, Trinity Brooks each managed multiple hits. Brooks, Arnold, and Richardson each collected two hits to lead the Eagles. Sydney Scott led South Gibson two hits and four at bats, and she had the big home run. Tomorrow, weather willing, and right now they're telling us it's probably going to be a monsoon, but uh, we will be doing baseball tomorrow, and I believe Dyersburg is the opponent. I don't know if we'll stream the 430 JV game, 
but we will stream the 6, approximately 6 o'clock, 6.30 varsity game against Dyersburg, and that's always a big time when Dyersburg comes to town, and um, we are looking forward to that. We're going to have a quick sign-off tonight because of uh, several reasons, but again, Jackson Christian ladies, a big winner today, and you can see this archived on YouTube, and we want to thank our, our great crew for all they've done, and uh, I have to stretch my neck because normally I have a monitor, but uh, trust me, people, I couldn't have had one today. I would have held it, had to hold it in my lap. But, of course, as always, Summer Sturgis directed it. Uh, Jamie Garcia was the cameraman, or did I, I say Garcia's agenda? Uh, Jamie, forgive me for that. The executive producer is Paul Schultze, and Coach Joe is the announcer, and I'm going to stretch my legs and see if they're still there. But the happy ending for Jackson Christian School, they won and moved their record to 7-2. and two. And we'll remind you that any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this contest without the express written consent of Worthy Road Studios is prohibited. It's time to say thanks for your time this time. Till next time, good night all.